Li Shangjing Chang'e On her Mika screen, candlelight flickers, fading. The river of stars gradually sets, the dawn star engulfed. Chang'e should regret stealing the elixir of eternal life. In the azure sea, in the green blue heaven, night after night, her heart. So we continue with Li Shangjing's uh, poems. This one, in many ways, is very similar to the previous one, to Jasper Lake, the one we read yesterday, eh, because the topic is also mythological, and we're going to explain the myth in a minute, the story of Chang'o or Chang'e, the goddess of the moon. But at the same time, this mythological story eh, matches very well with the typical, stereotypical, even uh, Kung Tishi uh, poetry of the abandoned belle, of the abandoned beauty surrounded by luxurious apartments and jewels and, uh, and but pining, longing for a loved one in her loneliness. So it's, it's the same take. So from, from that point of view, it's very similar to Jasper Lake in many other poems. The, the, the added element here is the mythological element because this poem is not just around any uh, forlorn and abandoned woman. It's about the goddess of the moon. And you could say, in a way, it's about the moon itself as, a, as a, an astronomical phenomenon, an object that floats in the sky. And there, whole, there, whole, there, has, there have also been other interpretations that we will comment uh, uh, in a moment that have actually read uh, the moon and uh, the lady in the moon as a, a, um, a metaphor or as a stand-in for, you know, a Taoist man with whom the poet might have been enamored or wished to engage in a sentimental relationship with. But anyway, Chang'e. So let's explain the myth because, as usual, you need the myth to understand the poem. So Chang'e was uh, the goddess of the moon. She was the wife of uh, G. the Archer, who is one of the culture heroes, one of the civilizational founders of, uh, of, of Chinese culture. And uh, the main legend about G. the Archer is that he killed nine out of the ten sons. Uh, so, so in the beginning there were ten sons. Each of the sons was a black raven surrounded by light. And they t took turn, turns to come out and illuminate the day. But one day, the little rascals decided to come, all of them together, the ten of them, and they produced uh, droughts and uh, sunburns and uh, catastrophe. So G. the Archer shot them and he killed nine of them. He left only one alive, which is the sun that comes now every day in the morning and sets uh, in the evening. So the gods punished uh, G. And his wife Chang'e for the for killing for the killing of the sons and sent them to earth as humans. And uh, Chang'e was not at all happy with with this situation. So her husband, uh, it seems the legend says, managed to get the elixir of immortality from the queen mother of the west, who appears in the previous poem. And he got two doses of the elixir, uh, one for himself, one for his wife. But the 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 the. the Queen Mother of the West warned him that if one person alone were to drink the whole of the elixir, not only would that person become immortal again, but that person would float away into the heavens. Now, Ji came back home with the elixir, and uh, he stored it in his home and told his wife. Uh, but his wife wasn't too happy with just being immortal. She missed the life in the heavens. She didn't want to continue living in the earth, even as an immortal. So she consulted a, 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 some sort of medium or, or a shaman uh, about what to do. And, and I think the shaman or the medium or the fortune teller told her, OK, you shouldn't go back to the, you shouldn't drink it all and go back to heavens because the gods will recriminate you for abandoning your husband. But you could go somewhere else, maybe. You could drink it all and go to the moon and enjoy uh, immortality in the heavens. And that's precisely what she did. She drank all the elixir by herself when she was alone in the house. She went floating up. And uh, now the legends diverge a bit. Some say she, turned into a, she was turned into a toad uh, as a punishment and that she had to live alone in the moon in the company of a hare obsessed with 
with making pigments and uh, an old man who wanted to cut the cassia tree in the moon, uh, Alice says uh, that, that, that she was allowed eventually to return to her human form. But uh, anyway, in, in, in whatever interpretation, she is living alone in the moon and her loneliness is a sort of punishment for her egoism at abandoning her husband and wanting to live in the heavens once again, just by herself. So that's the legend, that's the poem. And so the topics of the poem are evidently evoking this legend, but mainly portraying the lonely woman in sadness, who in this case is not just any other lonely woman, any other abandoned wife or concubine of the emperor, pining in her chambers. She is the goddess of the moon, and in a way she's the moon itself. So let's uh, read the poem couplet by couplet. First couplet. On her Mika screen, candlelight flickers, fading. The river of stars gradually sets, the dawn star engulfed. So the first couplet, um, the first couplet is, as usual, happen, as usually happens in this sort of poems, sets the scene. So we know from the title of the poem, it's Chang'e, the goddess of the moon. But we get the scene, we get the zoom in into her. So the first line actually depicts the, 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 the lady as if she were in, in, in her own quarters, in her own room, which would not necessarily have to be uh, a heavenly realm. So there's a Mika screen. We've encountered uh, the Mika screen. Screen in, in a previous poem by Li Shangjing. There is only behind the Mika screen a beautiful woman. So again, a Mika screen would presumably be a paper screen decorated or embedded with small pieces of Mika, making it a shiny, bright, metallic surface. So on, on this shiny, bright metal screen, there is a candlelight flickering and fading. So we have reflection of a light on the screen, but it's going... It's, 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 it's fading, it's going away. So the, 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 the images in this line and the second one are images of withering light. So the second line, the river of stars gradually sets, the dawn star engulfed. So this implies all the night, the wakefulness at night trope. We have the screen, we have a candlelight, which has probably been hmm, consuming itself all through the night. That's why its light is flickering and fading because the candle is almost consumed. And it's clear that it's close to dawn, or it's already dawn. The river of stars, that is, the Milky Way, is setting in the sky, no longer visible. And the dawn star is engulfed by the dawn, so it's morning. The, the person, the beautiful woman, in these quarters has spent all of the night awake. And uh, wakeful at night, and probably sad and melancholy. On her Mika screen, candlelight flickers fading. The river of stars gradually sets, the dawn star engulfed. They're both images of diminishing light, disappearing light, which is probably sad. It connotes sadness, darkness, never or seldom a pleasant image. And, uh, and there's this woman in the creeping darkness or in the creeping lack of light. Although, although it is dawn on the other hand, but then the moon hides when dawn comes around. And... Uh, and she's wakeful, she's been awake all night. Now the second, the first couplet, you know, you know, depicts the scene, yeah? The second couplet moves in to the story, you could say. In, in, in a way, it shows us the feelings of, of, of this lady, of this wakeful lady, but also in, it includes a criticism on the part of the poet. Chang'e should regret stealing the elixir of eternal life. In the azure sea, in the green blue heaven, night after night, her heart. So why should Shang'e regret having done what she done? Well, she is lonely. And night after night, in a sort of repetitive punishment that evokes the Greek uh, condemnations in hell, in Hades, of Sisyphus, or of Tantalus, or of the Danaids, she gets... In a way, you'd say the same punishment, which is night after night, she must go on alone, rising into the heavens, into the green blue heavens, reflecting and sinking into the azure seas, always alone and always away from the big light. And her heart, 
is in this azure vast plain of the sea, in this green blue plains of the heavens where the moon <laughs> cycles around and where she cycles around and she is lonely and cold and sad and that's her punishment and she regrets or she should regret in the opinion of the poetic persona she should regret her deeds because now she's condemned to an eternity of loneliness and coldness so that would be the poem i have another translation here by uh, james j y Liu. it's pretty similar there doesn't many differences i think and the, this version says Against the screen of mother of clouds, the candle throws its deep shadow. The long river gradually sinks. The morning star sets. Chang'o should regret having stolen the elixir, the green sea, the blue sky, her heart every night. And uh, the, poet, the, the translator comments, the poem shows considerable power of imagination. The mythological scene is conceived in concrete detail. The screen, the shadow cast by the candle, the Milky Way, the morning star setting at dawn, and the solitary figure of the goddess facing the immensities of the sea and the sky all night. And he also mentions that some critics have actually interpreted uh, the poem as, uh, you know, in the moon, the goddess of the moon uh, is taken, it may be taken to represent a Taoist nun. Um, after all, this poem... Uh, is part of a set of other poems, uh, including one that is addressed to Taoist nuns named Sun. But uh, okay, this is um, this is uh, you know probably too far fetched. <laughs>